Today we head to the city by the bay. It's a Texas utopia for food, history, and sunshine. So let's let the wind carry us all the way to Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi sits right in the middle of the Texas coast. Just over two hours from San Antonio, but much less for folks in and around South Central Texas. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. While often thought of as a beach town, Corpus isn't technically on the coast, but built beside the waters of Corpus Christi Bay. However, with the palm tree lined streets and the salty breeze in the air, the beach vibe in Corpus is one of the best in Texas. Now Corpus is no small town, and it would take many day trips to do it all. But to understand how this bayfront chunk of real estate became Corpus Christi, we better start at the beginning. And given the prominent Spanish influence here, Corpus likes to trace its roots all the way back to Christopher Columbus, the man who discovered the New World in 1492. I suppose he's somewhat responsible for Spanish culture in Corpus, but it's not as if he landed here in Corpus. The New World, I shall name you Corpus Christi. And he certainly wasn't the one who brought breakfast tacos here. I give you chorizo and egg. Let's see, and this one is potato and egg. Anyone? Or Tejano music. Yes, the Corpus of today is much more than what Columbus brought here. But what Corpus does have is how he got here. At the Corpus Christi Museum of Science and History. Okay, not the actual ships, but as close as anyone can get. Three exact replicas of the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And while all three aren't exactly seaworthy nowadays, they are available for tours. Well, welcome to the museum. Right now, you're on the Pinta. It was a caravel vessel. Caravel means that it can move real fast from port to port. It had a crew member of 27. Then you have the Santa Maria. That was the one that Christopher Columbus traveled on. He had a crew member of 40. While 40 seems like a large crew, I'm amazed at how not large all these ships are. All three were built in Spain in 1983 and sailed the old fashioned way across the Atlantic. This mast is actually one solid tree. It shoots from the deck all the way up. So Christopher Columbus actually sailed long before the invention of the ship wheel. So this is how they turn the rudder. Big old lever. It is impossible for me to imagine a bazillion mile trip across the Atlantic Ocean on ships as big as these. Now the rest of the museum is great, with more history and of course science. Good boy, good boy. But while we're on the topic of old ships, let's fast forward about oh, 450 years to a much, much different way of sailing the shining seas. This is the USS Lexington. Commissioned in 1943, the Lexington first fought in World War II and then went on to serve the Stars and Stripes for 50 years. Today, she offers day trippers like us the rare opportunity to step aboard a real battle-tested aircraft carrier. The Lexington is one gigantic artifact, so big that it isn't in a museum. It is the museum. This is Rocco Montezano, who's more than just the executive director. He's a man who's actually landed on the deck of the Lexington. Throughout my career, I came back here for, for different training evolutions. I think I ended up with about 48 landings on Lexington. <laughs> Probably heard... three good ones, but... Uh... <laughs> 48, we'll count them all. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this ship. Well, Lexington is what's known as an Essex-class aircraft carrier. And the SS class specifically were built to win the war in the Pacific. It participated in most of the major battles from 1943 till the end of the war, including Iwo Jima. The most famous battle it fought in was what's known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot, where over the space of two days, uh, Lexington Air Crew, along with the uh, battle group, was responsible for shooting down over 400 Japanese aircraft. Wow. 
Tell me a little bit about its nickname, the Blue Ghost. Well, the Blue Ghost is really kind of interesting. Now, back in World War II, they painted camouflage on all the aircraft carriers. Now, how do you hide an aircraft carrier? I don't know, but Lexington was the only Essex class that never got painted. It went over with a deep, dark blue color. Then the uh -huh. Japanese reporter sunk on five different occasions, but she kept coming up, and the Japanese uh, Tokyo Rose said, they must be talking about a ghost ship because Lexington was sunk. Sorry. And so the crew said, Blue Ghost, that's pretty neat, so we'll become the Blue Ghost. Blue Ghost, I love that story, that's great. And the Blue Ghost has yet to be sunk. And if you aren't the type impressed by history, how about sheer humongousness? It has more sleeping space than the world's largest hotel. It generates enough electricity to power a town of 150,000 people. The flight deck is big enough to host three football games at the same time. Just make sure you don't dive out of bounds. Check this out. This is called a tail hook. And when the planes would land on an aircraft carrier, there would be a cable, and this hook had to catch that cable to slow the plane down fast enough to stop. The Lexington is packed with stuff to see. There are cannons to side in, floors of exhibits, and I think I look pretty good in the captain's chair. Yeah, this is probably the most comfortable seat on this ship. I could get used to it. But for a truly unique look at the Lex, you must go beyond the regular tour. All right, so this is Jim and Hugh. They're volunteers with the USS Lexington, and they're about to take me on a hard hat tour. All right, gentlemen, lead the way. This will be fun. The hard hat tour is a special one, available only by reservation. It takes visitors way off the beaten path and into the belly of the beast, through narrow corridors and down ladder after steep ladder. This whole ship down here sort of smells like an old army surplus with metal and paint. First stop, the engine room. This is number one engine room. Uh, all the orders from the bridge would come here. Full There's, steam ahead, these yeah, guys would yeah, punch it. There's two engines here. Each engine's 37,500 horsepower, so we got a combined total of 150,000 horsepower. On an average cruise day, she'd burn 74,000 gallons of fuel a day. Wow. With a crew of over 1,500 people, the Lexington had to have everything they needed for months at sea. These evaporators could produce 180,000 gallons of fresh water a day. You might not realize we are below the water line. Really? Oh, that's cool. So we are underwater now. Yeah, right. This is one of the shafts or one of the four engines that we have on board the ship. Wow. Okay. So there's a propeller at the other end of this thing. That way. This way. <laughs> so it turned around under here. While very interesting, this tour is also a bit creepy. And beyond the Blue Ghost nickname, some say there are also ghosts aboard from the men killed in action. Well, fortunately for us, there's no time to linger and find out. Let's head back up into daylight. And in true day tripper form, I'm getting pretty hungry. Now I could go for something local. You know, a real mom and pop kind of shop. So this is Corpus Christi's little local burger joint. One that just happens to have over 700 locations. Yep, you might not have known it, but Whataburger is a Corpus original. And the flagship store of this burger empire is right here, Whataburger by the Bay. It's a day trip attraction in itself, the only Whataburger in America with an elevator. And that means two stories of tasty burger dining. Of course, the original Whataburger was much smaller when it was started in 1950 by a local legend named Harmon Dobson. To learn more, I found Whataburger exec Rob Rodriguez. I think that's so so awesome. They, they see Whataburgers by the side of the road, they don't realize what humble roots it came from. Absolutely, we're in over 10 states now, and we have over 700 restaurants now, but it all started right here in Corpus Christi. And the neat thing about Harmon is that he didn't want to make burgers like everybody else, so he decided to make a, a five inch bun for our Whataburgers. Again, because everything in Texas is big, right? Sure, sure, but yeah. even today, we still serve our Whataburgers the same way. We just have a, an incredible following. Yeah, incredible is an understatement. The Whataburger fan club is rabid, especially down here on the coast. There's even a couple from down here who's visited every Whataburger. Serious loyalty. To see how Whataburger makes it, just like you like it, we stepped into the back. Ted, here we are in the heart of the restaurant right here, the grill, okay. where it all starts. Oh yeah. Okay. And Rachel here is firing up 100% beef, never frozen. That's a big patty right there. Oh, absolutely. That that's what makes a Whataburger. Yeah. yeah. That's our own special seasoning on every Whataburger. But you know we have 36,864 ways to make a Whataburger. Hold up, pause that. 36,864 ways? 
but I don't even have to think about how I like mine. A number one with cheese and grilled jalapenos. That's, that's my burger. That's my burger. You know, there's just every little piece of that Whataburger is makes it a Whataburger. All right, so Herschel here is building your Whataburger, and that is a heated table. We have membranes in there that keep that table hot at all times. Wow, that baby never cools off. Never all cools off. All the way to your hand. Our lettuce, our tomatoes are sliced right here in our restaurant, and even our onions. Oh, they, our onions are powerful because they're cut right before every shift. And one thing you notice, the distribution of the vegetables, we want to make sure that from the first bite to the last bite has all those ingredients on it, and it's your way. Okay, hot off the grill. Here we go. Here's Chet's what a burger. Look at that. <laughs> it's a thing of beauty right oh, there. Oh, my A thing goodness. of beauty. There's my special little package right there. Now to unwrap it. So I hope that everyone out there has had a Whataburger before, because if you haven't, you're truly missing out on a Texas tradition. What a burger. No kidding, grilled jalapenos, melty cheese, just like I like it. There's just something about a Whataburger. Texas tradition, between a bun. Whew, them jalapenos are spicy. So if you didn't already know, this ain't your normal ketchup. This is Whataburger ketchup. And it doesn't come in those little tiny squeeze packets. It comes in the Whataburger ketchup buckets. It's not as sweet. It is maybe a little bit more salty. I'm gonna dip it in that ketchup. Now that is a tasty Corpus lunch, and there's only one person left to thank. <sighs> Mr. Dobson, I wanted to just personally thank you for lunch today. So, 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 hey, what's in the ketchup? What's in the ketchup? You're not gonna tell me, are you? No. Okay, all right, well, hey, good job. We got a lot to see. I'll be back to Whataburger many times. Okay, where to next? We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. While sunshine and sand sound pretty great, what sounds even better right now is snow. You see, even on the hottest day in Corpus, the forecast always calls for snowfall. Or make that snowball. But not just any snowball. One made by the snowball queen herself, Sofia Hernandez. Keeping Corpus cold since 1979. So how did you get in the snowball business? My husband and I, um, he wanted us to have something to do. Uh -huh. And so he decided that he wanted to do his own thing. So you all wanted to start a business and you thought, hey, why not snowball? That's right, yeah. <laughs> and it's been a big thing. <laughs> Seriously big. Not only is their standard snowball size gigantic, Snowball also made the Guinness Book of World Records for making the world's largest snow cone. And with 60 flavors to pick from, these raspas, that's Spanish for snow cone, are truly legendary. Okay, this is the only place I've seen that puts the ice cream scoop right there, boom, on top of the snow cone. Mm -hmm. Is that y'all's idea? That was our idea, but we do bottom and top. So there's a hidden ice cream ball underneath yeah, there? Yeah, and one oh. on top. <laughs> oh, awesome. So what flavor should I get? I think strawberry is uh, number one. Okay, strawberry it is. Mm -hmm. Look at this, an authentic snowball. And it looks like I got a little snowball right on top of it. You know, there's two very critical pieces of every snow cone. The most important is the ice. And let me tell you, they've nailed it here. Oh, that is good. Like a little, little bit of snow cone, scoop a little bit of that bluebell off the top. Oh man. All right, back to the road as we go from snow to surf. Now, surfing on the Texas coast gets a bit of a bad rap. The waves look pretty righteous today, bro. We're gonna get some killer shreds out here, dude. Let's go. Unpredictable waves can make it really tough to be a surfer in Texas. And Texas surfers are some of the most patient and optimistic folks out there. There's some totally righteous sets coming in, man. That must have been at least knee high out there on the bay, dude. However, over the years, there have been some epic waves and epic surfers in the Lone Star State. And the place to ride the waves of history is at the Texas Surf Museum. This is its owner and director, Brad Lomax. Who would have thought that Texas and surfing would go together? But it, it's amazing. There is a, there is a culture that, is, that exists in Corpus Christi and the Texas coast that is, has got as much stoke for surfing in it as any place in the world, I promise you. <laughs> maybe Very more, good. maybe yeah. more. So tell me a little bit about the, the boards in here. Well, actually, all of this came about, Chet, from my relationship with Pat McGee, who at the Pat McGee Surf Shop in Port Aransas since 1969. And Pat amassed this amazing collection 
of surfboards and surf memorabilia. A lot of people besides Pat have contributed. I mean, you see the boards. There's a lot of boards that were made here in Texas back in the 60s all the way up until, you know, last month. Henry Fry, I mean, he's he's a machine. That's a very recent picture of him. He is still shaping boards oh, that's in Spring awesome. Branch, Texas, north of Houston. I, there are people in California who, who order their boards from Henry Fry. Copeland Surf Shop, one of the first surf shops in Corpus Christi. Th these low boards, low was made in Port Aransas, probably the first local uh, surfboard company and local shapers. Yes, shaping boards has been an art form in Texas, almost as long as the sport's been around. It's, an, it's a piece of art. I mean, oh. it, it is a sculpted wave riding vehicle. And no board would have ever been the same if it was done by hand. Everyone just slightly different. A little bit different. Since no one has refuted me yet, I will tell you with authority that this is the oldest surfboard in Texas. Oh, very but, cool. But actually, I think it is. A friend of a friend of a friend told us about this man in this surfboard. He actually built this board out of a uh, popular mechanics. Wow. He, he followed directions and built this board in his garage in Houston, Texas. It's been sitting there for decades. This surfboard is the oldest one built in Corpus. Wow. And so, I mean, it's wooden, heavy, no fin, you know, so I mean, it, it goes yeah, back go to way the- way back, way back. I must say, this is quite a welcome education on Texas surfing. From South Padre all the way to the Bolivar Peninsula, Texas surfing has been around a long time. And as long as there's a Gulf of Mexico, Texas will be out riding the waves. But while traditional surfing can be hit or miss in the Corpus area, there's a particular kind of surfing that's always popular here. A kind of surfing that doesn't rely on waves, but wind. It's called kite surfing or kite boarding. And if you're up for it, there's no better place to start than pro kite surf. Today, I'm getting a first timer's lesson. And here's my instructor, Jordan. All right, Chet. Well, the first thing you want to know about kiting is where you're going to be riding what kind of conditions you're going to be riding in and how to keep yourself safe in your conditions. And the conditions here in Corpus just happen to be some of the best in the world for kiteboarding. A consistent onshore breeze, a huge shallow bay, and plenty of Texas sunshine. Step one is to learn how to fly a kite. The first thing I'm going to show you is how that kite is going to be able to steer using a bar. By pointing the kite, riders can capture the wind and steer any direction they choose. It's basically like surfing and sailing at the same time. But these kites are way different from those diamond-shaped things with the frilly tails on them. <laughs> There's a lot more power on this little trainer than I expected. Now this is a two meter, two meter squared kite. So the kite we're gonna go out on is a 13 meter squared kite. Time to upgrade from the trainer to the big boy. Let's hit the water. But no board just yet. The first step is to learn how to body drag. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Just make sure you keep your mouth closed. And finally, it's time to hop on a board. All right, looks like this isn't gonna be as easy as I expected. Whoo, now I know why folks say it's only 20% board and 80% kite. Although one convenient thing is that when the kite falls in the water, it can reopen and relaunch itself. But that only helps if you can actually keep it from crashing into the water over and over and over. And these guys make it look so easy. I've got these coolies over here doing this, and all I'm doing is, well, this. Oh, well. It's a good thing fear of failure is not part of day tripping. While I'm not ready to throw in the towel, sadly, the lesson is over. Oh, man, that was harder than it looks. I think I was a little bit naive thinking I could do it on the first try. Every time I got that kite straight up, it would dip, and then I'd try to turn her back, and I just couldn't get the power I needed to pull me up. I guess I'm just gonna have to come back to Corpus and try again. But the good news is, despite my first failed attempt at kiteboarding, there's a not so exclusive club that will still let me in. The Executive Surf Club. Yeah, regardless of your talent level at actually surfing, this bar and restaurant welcomes one and all. It makes for the perfect spot for a post-surf hangout, a casual place to grab a burger or a cold one, and chat about the day's killer tubes and epic shreds. Or in my case, lack thereof. Oh well, here's to trying something new.
Maybe my personal surf report will be better on the next day trip. And as you drink your tasty beverage inside the club, don't miss what's outside the club. The South Texas Music Walk of Fame, honoring all the great music makers that have hailed from South Texas. From artists like Chris Christopherson to Texas Tornadoes, Doug Somm, and Flaco Jimenez. But of course, we must mention the musical princess of Corpus, Selena, who was so influential both in Corpus and music in general, she has her very own memorial here. There's some pretty talented folks here in Texas. This puts me in the mood for music. Luckily, the spot we're headed for dinner and our last stop of the day has both great food and great tunes. Panjo's Pizza. Yeah, not exactly the kind of music South Texas is known for, but the perfect kind of music to wash down some tasty Panjo's Pizza. The time-tested classic thin crust they've been baking up since 1964. This is Caitlin, the owner's daughter, and the lady in charge tonight. Now, do you know all the how to make the pizza? Did you start working here um, as a little girl? I started working here when I was 11 years old, and <laughs> nice. I haven't stopped. <laughs> People say it's the best pizza in town. Okay. It definitely right. is. This is the original one? This is the original one. And this is also the original stuff. Everything in here is original from 1964. Very good. Even, the, even Bubba, he's been here since 1964. <laughs> yeah, tell me about this band. Bubba, I don't know how, how this even started, but Bubba, he just started playing one night. Uh, they had a piano here. Uh -huh. Bubba came up, he just started playing. I don't know how to explain it's it. It's just like... <laughs> How do you explain old men in red coats playing the trombone? <laughs> Just good. That's how you explain it. Bubba and the boys. They're as much a staple of this place as actual pizza, performing live every Friday and Saturday night. And you've got no excuse not to sing along. All the words are right here. So who would you say uh, the folks are who come into Panjo's? Well, mostly local or people that came here when they were kids and their families and their kids. How long have you guys been coming here? Oh, uh, all our lives. 40, 50 years? Really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've been coming over 30 years, so. Really? Since I was about three or four years old. It's a great little place. It's loud, fun, uh -huh. and they've got the best pizza in town. Hey, those three things I like. It's a good thing I put my order in a while back, because their motto, takes longer, tastes better, is definitely true. But truly great pizza is worth the wait. Now this is a Panjo's pie. Upon a recommendation, I got the works. It's got pepperoni, Canadian bacon, salami, Italian sausage, peppers, onions, mushrooms, and then the kicker down here in Corpus, shrimps. Little tiny baby shrimp. Oh, I'm excited about this pizza. Oh, that is a good, good piece of pizza pie. Just, you know, the right amount of crunchy on the bottom. Oh, the toppings. I've got a topping waterfall off of this pizza. I gotta get some of these toppings back on there right there. You know, the most magical part of any pizza is gonna be the crust. And man, the Panjo's thin crust, they got it nailed. Man, you know I love old joints. And to think that people have been coming in here for almost 50 years, sitting at these wooden tables, eating this pizza, listening to this music. Oh, I love it. I love it. What a day on the bay. Whether a history hunter, a sunshine junkie, a wave riding pro, or a little bit of everything, you need to come and play by the bay and sing along to the tune of life. Man, this has been a phenomenal day. I'm going to let Bubba take us out on this one. All right, so I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Yeah. Bye. This is called a tail hook. When the plans would lane, lane. When the planes would lane. The Lexington fought in World War II and then served the stripe, the stripes and the stars. <laughs> Siderite, elexatite, stibonite, chromonite, tiunumonite, celestite, natriparite. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Anyone? They're delicious, I promise. I've kept them warm the whole trip over. 
No? All right, I'll just eat them myself. That's fine. They should make all coats with breakfast taco pockets. Oh, bitty bitty bum bum. Oh, come on, guys. Bitty bitty bum bum. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Bitty bitty bum bum. Feel it all the time. Feels good, no? Yes. Bitty bitty bum bum. Bitty bitty bum bum. Bitty bitty bum bum. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at The Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigos.